Hi there, everyone. My name is Priraj Juthani. I'm an MD MBA candidate or graduate uh, from Yale and actually a first year intern at Stanford's Internal Medicine Residency Program. So today I want to make a video about how I've been studying effectively in residency only because residency can be very intense and time consuming. And sometimes it can be tough to know exactly when exactly are you supposed to study and how exactly are you supposed to learn? Still stuff I'm figuring out to this day and still feel very unconfident in terms of how I'm gonna learn everything, but there are certain things that have worked for me. So I'm just gonna go through these tips and hopefully they help you. The first tip that I have is to leverage your resources. Learning, much like investing in the stock market, is best done when it's diversified. And what I mean by this is know that even when you may not understand it, you're learning all the time in residency. And specifically, for example, let's say a patient comes in with something I'm not sure about. I may go to up to date and read up on the most up to date criteria for that disease. I may then go to listen to a podcast. I may even find a Twitter uh, tweet or account that has useful information. And so the reason I say this is because leveraging my resources has been one of the most enticing ways to learn in residency, because sometimes I'm learning when I look stuff up literally on the go when I'm on the shift. And other times I actually write stuff down and I go home and I look it up and I find a useful podcast about it, or I find a nice little Twitter account. And one Twitter account I highly recommend that all of you follow follow is this one called Brown Hospital Medicine. It's actually the hospital medicine, I'm not sure if it's a division, but it's part of Brown University. And they have tons of unique case studies that I have found to be very relevant. And when you're learning and when you're in the hospital every day, a lot of these case studies take on an entirely new meaning because they might remind you of a patient that you personally have had. And so that's another great way I've been learning. Core I Am is a podcast, Twitter accounts like the Brown Hospital Medicine, and then up to date, because literally when I have a question, I go to up to date and you'll see I've already garnered like 125 CME continuing medical education credits because I use up to date so much. And when I find a unique thing I, I like on up to date, I save it in my knowledge repository through Anki. And that helps me learn um, quite a bit in residency. So that's the first tip, leverage your resources. The second tip that I have for you is um, building off of the first tip, which is the fact that even when you may not realize you're learning, you're actually learning. In my residency program, every day we have noon conference and morning report. And what that means is in, in the morning, we go over a unique case of a patient uh, with the entire residency program and think about what we can learn from that. And at noon, we go over a specific topic, for example, management of cirrhosis, management of upper GI bleeds, management of SIADH, right? And when you go through these things, little by little every day, you may not realize it, but you're learning a ton. And what I have personally started doing is taking a lot of these learnings that I'm getting every day in the form of presentations and saving them in Notion. And by doing that, I actually have this entire repository of information. And so one day, let's say I'm trying to figure out something about, I don't know, like, um, diverticulosis. You'll see that I have an entire teaching module right here about diverticulosis and how to manage it. And I can actually go back to those um, specific documents and refer to them if that ever comes up again. And again, much like with uh, space repetition, when you go back to these things over and over again, that is one of the best ways to learn. And so all that to say, um, make sure you pay attention to morning report, make sure you pay attention to noon conference, but even if you don't pay attention or even if you don't get that time to go, you can always save those things and go back to them later. Um, and you'll be surprised at how much you learn. Another thing that I often do is every day when I'm on inpatient, I often divide my piece of paper. I have one piece of paper. I divide it up into eight different quadrants. And with those um, eight different quadrants, seven of them are for patients. So I usually take care of patient one here, patient two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's where I list all of my to do's for those patients. But that eighth one is always things that I learn. So let's say during rounds, the attending makes a specific point about dosing a specific medication, or maybe they say, oh, this patient has this, we should really think about this. So much teaching is done on rounds because you're learning from people who are much smarter than you. And then when I write it down, I go home with this and I actually, from those days learnings, I try to think about one or two things I wanna remember and I look those up. And so that's why it's important to realize like, hey, even when you're not learning or you're thinking you're not learning, you're still learning, especially when you have a specific part of your entire sheet dedicated to it. 
And now my third tip for all of you is Anki, Anki, Anki. I still continue to use Anki a lot in residency. I don't do flashcards every day, but I actually have organized my entire residency thus far by the different rotations I've done. And when I'm on those rotations, if I learn something, I create an Anki card and I save it in that rotation. And what this is gonna help me do is down the road, if I were to do a cardiology rotation again, I have an entire knowledge database that I had the first time I did the rotation. And this time it has all this cardiology information relevant to that particular rotation. If I ever go back to my nephrology clinic, there's clearly a bunch of nephrology information I've been using. So all that to say, I have been continuing to utilize Anki purely as a way to organize my thoughts and a lot of what I've been learning. And you can see here, um, I actually include some of the notes that I take while on these rotations in some of the Anki cards I make. And the reason I do that is, again, to anchor the fact that I've done this before and the first time I did it, here's what I learned. And you'll see that I include quite a bit of unique images. I found a lot of these images on Google and that way it's not just relevant to the rotation, it's actually relevant to the guidelines and the way things work. This is a fibro scan. This is all about H. pylori, which tests are the most specific, which are the most sensitive. All of this information is very unique and helpful when you're a resident. So hopefully you can now see uh, the ways I've been learning. I'm using a lot of resources. I'm learning every day. And when I learn these things, I try to put them into Anki so that way I don't forget them. Um, and then last tip that I have for all of you, and this is actually the most eye-opening thing that I found more recently, is people think writing notes in residency is stupid. And unfortunately, that is a big part of our job. We write a lot of notes and um, it takes a big chunk of our time. The part of notes that I actually like is the assessment and plan. So for anyone who writes notes in residency, you'll know that there's a, there's a subjective portion, there's an objective portion, there's an assessment, and then there's a plan. The assessment is the fact that you look at the entire patient. If someone's coming in with right, right upper quadrant pain, you say, my assessment of this patient is that they could have gallstones, they could have cholecystitis, they could have, could, they could have cholelocodetitis, cholelithiasis, they could have pancreatitis, but here's why I think it's pancreatitis and not all of these other four. And in the assessment, you actually talk about why you think it's one thing over the other. And I actually spend a lot of time on my assessments because it's actually where I do a lot of learning. I say, hey, it's more likely pancreatitis because it has an elevated lipus. It's less likely cholecystitis because the imaging was not supportive of that. And by doing this and by actually t thinking about a lot of these things in the assessment and plan, that's where I do a lot of learning. Most of the other rest of the note, I don't spend much time on at all because I think it's for me not helpful, but the assessment and plan is helpful. So hopefully, Based on this video, you can see that I've been learning a lot by leveraging my resources. I've been learning every day a little bit by having this dedicated part of my workflow dedicated to what I'm learning. And then I'm doing a lot of Anki in terms of storing information. And lastly, I spend a lot of time in my assessment and plan rehashing what I've learned. So if you found this helpful, please drop a like. Um, if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments below. And thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.